What up, what up? Wimbush here. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make clouds, but not only that, if you look in the description below, you can go to my Gumroad and actually download free D uh, VDB clouds for you to use. But I'm gonna show you how to use two methods of X particles exposure to make clouds. So the first method here, I'm gonna show you how to shape it out using shapes in a MoGraph cloner. And then the second method, we're just gonna use straight exposure to make a randomized cloud. So let's get right into it with our blank canvas. And as always, I like to start with the X particle system. Now, if you don't have your grid laid out like this, you can always go to X particles, come down to XP system. And then there we go. We have everything set up here on our right hand side. And so now we're going to want to build our building blocks and we're literally going to put in a block right here. We have a cube in the center. Let's make this a little bit smaller, almost like a rectangle. Let's go um, 80 by 30 by, let's see what 40 looks like, 45. Yeah, maybe a tiny bit smaller. So there we go. We just want a small rectangle because we're gonna multiply this with the MoGraph cloner. So let's go up to MoGraph, come down to cloner. And there we go on the right hand side. Let's bring our cube under our cloner and then click on our cloner under mode Let's get on the grid array and let's make this maybe like two by three by two. And we're just going to use this shape. Now I'm grabbing the handles here to bring it smaller, or you could go to your attributes window right here to make it smaller, but I'm bringing these closer together. And then I'm going to randomize these with the random effector. So make sure you have your cloner clicked, go under MoGraph effector and come down to random there we have our shape is a little bit more randomized we don't want it so spread out well it depends on the look they're going for but let's move these in just a tad bit closer let's still leave a little bit of randomization in there and then under rotation let's just spin these around a lot make them as random as possible and then we can even go to scale, just randomize the scale a little bit, like so. Go back to my cloner, bring these in a tad bit more. There we go. So basically each of these uh, rectangles, we're gonna use the volume to emit our particles from. So back here on the right hand side, we wanna make our cloner as one object. In order to do that, we have to come over here under um, connect so click on your connect grab your cloner drag it under the connect and you can see everything gets grayed out and that's showing that everything is as one object because when we come over to x particles in our system when you go to emitter we're going to want to emit from an object and it's going to need to know that this is our object that we're emitting from so under emitter shape let's go down to object and then our connect our connected object that we have here let's drag this down into the object and then for emit from right here go down to object volume now let's click play and you can see we have particles emitting from the volume of this object that we just created but let's go to our um let's go to our display let's pick a different color so that we can see it better maybe red and then under editor display Let's go under circle and let's hit play again. See if we can see it better. There we go. So now we have our particles emitting, but they're emitting at a constant rate, which we don't want. So let's go under admission and then under admission mode, go under shot. We only want it to shoot for um, one frame and then we got up our particle count though. So let's go up to add another zero to that. Let's click play. There we go. So now we have more than enough particles to play with. Under speed, we want to come down to zero. And that's because we want our particles to actually be controlled by a turbulence. So if we come under modifiers, go under motion modifiers, and let's go under XP turbulence. And then this is all up to you what kind of shape you're looking for. But if you click play, now you can see you're getting like a wavy type motion in there or you could go under your noise type 
I like to use curl, maybe up the strength a little bit. Click play again. And maybe that's too strong. Let's bring it down to 10 maybe. Click play again. There we go. So now we're getting a, a decent cloud shape there. And again, this is all off personal preference. Like I used cubes here, but you could use circles. You could use any of your geometry. So you could use a sphere. You could use a polygon, a cone, cylinder, and you can even mix them all up, you know, to get different randomized shapes. But for now, we're just going to use this. Our shape is looking pretty decent. So now what we could do is we could connect these particles even more to kind of make the shape stick together. So under our XP system, let's go under dynamics and then come under XP constraint. And now under, I believe it's collision. Yeah, we want to click collisions on, but we can move the weight down maybe just like 10% maybe. Let's click again. Now our stuff is starting to stick together a little bit more and they're not, they're not really um, intersecting with each other. So that's good. Now let's add an explosion. So we come back under dynamics. Let's go to XP explosion. And now you see that we have this box in there and this is what's going to generate our cloud. But first we have to go to our, our emitter. We have to go to tags and then under X particles, let's add an explosion source. We can bump our velocity up to 400. And then under our, our emitter, we have to go under, what was it? Objects, emissions. No, sorry. We have to go to our extended data, go under physical data, and then we have to add fuel to the fire. So let's just bump this up to one. And now let's click play. And now you can see we're starting to get a nice smoke cloud here. And let's go back to our explosion. Let's um, go under simulation. Let's click our gravity down to zero. And let's click play again. And there we go. So that's basically how you can use the MoGraph cloner with randomized shapes. Let me click under cloner again. And um, let's make this maybe like three by two by three. And this just shows you how you can just go in easily and make randomized shapes. We can even add, you know, add a sphere, take our sphere, bring this down drag it under our cloner and now we have a mixture of um cubes and spheres and that's going to give us a little bit different shape you know you play around with your randomizer a little bit say so bring it in like that so there's all types of stuff you could do to easily make randomized shape clouds or cloud shapes so that's just one method of how we do it so um i'm gonna clear my screen out and then i'm going to show you another method and then from there we're going to export it as vdbs and then in part two we're going to bring it into redshift to render it out so um yeah give me a second i'll clear this out and i'll be right back so i'm gonna come up to my top here going to x particles hit xp system and on the right hand side we see we have our emitter now I'm going to go into object and for my emitter plane, I'm just going to go to positive Y. And actually, in fact, I'm going to make our emitter shape a box. So this is going to basically be the basis of our shape of our cloud. So I'm going to make it more into like a, a rectangle shape here, as you can see. And if you're following along, let's just um, bump these up. So 90 by 175 by 35. As you can see in the size, I just like working with whole numbers. And so there we go. And if I hit play, you see our particles are going all over the place. Now we can start to build the shape of the cloud by going into modifiers. You go to motion modifiers, go to XP turbulence, and let's add some curl under the noise type curl. Let's bump our strength up to like 20, hit play. And you can see 
our particles are starting, you know, starting to give a little bit of cool form here. We can bump up our strength a little bit more, like 40. Really make it curl within itself. And let's do a happy medium at 30. Okay, so we have our little particles emitting out like this. I'm gonna come back to my emitter, go under emissions, and I only want this to emit for like two frames because clouds basically they're not you know self generating the whole time and so i'm going to go to my end emitter here so i want to emit all frames end emitter click two frames and i just want the particles to you know give the basic um expansion of our, our clouds here so if i hit play you can see we only have two frames worth of particles here and that's because when we use explosia all the clouds and everything is going to be based off of those initial plugins or not plugins initial particles there and then under speed i'm going to bump it up to like 400 and then i'm just going to use like a random variation maybe like let's say 175 just so our particles are kind of randomized and they're all coming out at once and then birth rate i'm gonna just leave at a thousand for now and everything looks good here so next we're going to add explosion so go under dynamics and let's go to explosion effects. Now, if I hit play, you can see nothing's happening here. We only see our particles in here and that's because we need to tell explosion. We're using our emitter here to try to build our cloud. And so under our XP emitter, we want to click on that, go to tags, go to X particle tags, and then come down to explosion FX source. And then here, I'm gonna kick up my velocity to like 400, bring my fuel down just a little bit, like 85. And if you wanna know what any of these attributes do, just make sure you hit the question mark here. And also you can hit the camera and there'll be more explanation of what everything does in here. But now let me hit play. And you can see we're still not seeing any cloudlets because we have a couple more steps. Now let's go back to our XP emitter and under our admissions, we need to make our radius a little bit larger so explosion can see the particles. So I found a good number is around nine or 10 for our radius size. And then under extended data, we come under physical data. And under here, we have some of our explosion attributes, which the one we want to use is the fuel. So we need some fuel for the fire. Hit one, hit enter. Now let's do playback. And now we have our explosion but we wanted to make it look a little bit more cloud like and so we could come back under our explosion fx and under forces you can actually add turbulence to the smoke itself and so for our curl strength let's make it like a 30. let's hit play again and there we go you see it's starting to take a good cloud shape there you can also add some wind to it if you want to kind of control how your clouds being built Let's bring in a wind modifier of like five. And then over here under create, you click on that and you see over on the right hand side where it says explosion FX, it makes a wind modifier for the explosion. But you control everything under your forces tab. And then let's drag this out a little bit. Oh, not that one. I wanna drag out the wind. Make sure you click wind. Now let's hit play. You can see everything starting to be pushed in within itself. So we're getting a good cloud shape here. And for our timeline, we're going to be um, basically we're going to be exporting VDB files so we can bring that back into whatever you want. Um, I use Redshift, but you can bring them into Octane. Um, I'm not sure what else you can handle it, but we're going to want to admit just a couple of those. So for our time frame, I'm going to bring it down to 30. And when we cache it out, it's going to make 30 VDB files for us. And then from there, we can kind of pick what shape we want to use to make our cloud. And so we do, a, um, let's run a playback. I think for now, I'm pretty happy with that cloud shape and what it's doing. You know, depending on what kind of shape you want to use, you know, you can emit like circles, you can emit cylinders, you can set up, you know, um, objects as emitters, you know, just play around. You can add more emitters. To make your cloud shape but for the um, tutorial here we're just going to stick with this simple setup and we're going to want to our we're going to want to cache our vdb files now so under other objects we're going to go to xp cache 
And if you look over here under EFX format, you can export the VDB files. And then under our folder, this is where we're going to want to export our VDB files so we can access them later. So make sure you pick a good spot where you can find them. I'm going to go under my cache here, make a new folder. Let's just call it clouds tutorial. There we go. Hit OK. And then that's where everything's going to cache out at. But before we do that, we want to come over into our simulation. Now, I'm not 100% with the sim scale and the speed um, scale do, but somebody was telling me for stuff like clouds, when I posted this on Discord, they said that my sim scale should be on the lower side for the clouds. And I think for like smoke and fire and explosions, your sim scale could be higher. And so um, I found that like 20 by 20 for the sim scale and speed seemed to work out pretty good. And then under a solver, for a voxel size, this is basically our resolution size. So the higher the voxel size, the faster it's going to load in our, our viewport. So if I make it like 10, you can see everything going pretty fast in our viewport, but the resolution is pretty low. But if you go too low, depending on your computer specs, it might freeze it up. So I find a good in between part is like between two and 1.5. And a caveat with this as well is whenever you're caching, it's pretty much like rendering. So the higher the voxel size, the faster it's gonna cache out. The lower the voxel size, the longer it's gonna take the cache out. So I wanna have a pretty defined cloud because I wanna get pretty close to it. So let's say 1.5. And actually, let me save what we're doing here. So I'm gonna make an XP clouds tutorial. And I'll also, I'll put this up on my Gumroad too, so you guys can follow along or you can see how my setup is and, you know, break it apart as you want. And so I'm going to stick with the 1.5 voxel size. I'm pretty good with everything that's going there. And I'm going to hit XP cache and then I'm going to build the cache, which is going to end part one because this is going to take anywhere between like five to eight minutes to cache out. And so on part two, I'm going to show you guys how to bring our VDB files into Redshift and then from there, we can render it out, take it into After Effects, and, you know, add um, a tritone to it, make a little, you know, make the cloud look a little bit more puffy. But um, since this cache is going to take a little bit of time, I'm going to end this video here. If you found this helpful, please leave me a comment, leave me a thumbs up, you know, subscribe to the channel if you like what I'm doing. And I'll see you guys in part two. So make sure you click in the description below.